Amen. Amen. We praise God for one more opportunity to be in his house of praise and worship one more time. And my prayer is that he would absolutely meet us here and the Holy Spirit would give us what we need to be able to truly praise and worship him. And so I just thank God on today for him being who he is. Come on, stand up with me. Those of you that are at home, don't cheat on me. Stand up. We're going to give God the praise because he is our all in all. He is our cornerstone. He is the one who died for us. Amen and amen. is built on nothing less. Ah, oh, I remember growing up on that. My hope is built yes. on nothing less than Jesus' blood, than Jesus blood and righteousness. Hallelujah. I dare not trust the sweetest frame. Give me a little bit more. But holy lean on Jesus. Give me a little bit more on fire. This is true. Yes. My hope is built on nothing less. Yes, that's where my hope is. Jesus' from. blood and righteousness. Yes, because He died for us. We can trust Him. I dare to not trust the sweetest frame. Right there with us. But holy lean on oh, Jesus. What a
in the mirror and, and thought about how short we fall every day. But I tell you, there was an old hymn and it was called, I Surrender All. <laughs> and I didn't understand what it meant when I was young. Uh, but right now, today, I understand that I have given him my all. Everything about me, it belongs to him. Try to clean it up nice, that he would get the all grace, together. the pleasure, the glory Living rich in, the world in who I am. And, and so I live my life. And I've been waiting <laughs> to give it till I could give you something better. That I could make him be you just want my heart. But in order to do so, here it is. All yes. of this, when you take it in this, we have to give it all to you. Here I am, fully surrendered. Jesus, you can have it all. Jesus, you can have it all. Jesus, you can have it all. Cause you love every broken piece of an honest offering. Jesus, you can have it all. Treasure, your kingdom rules by a different measure. And so I'm pouring out a tear on an empty vessel. Lord, here's my heart. Here's my heart. The joy and the sorrow. Yes, get it tomorrow. Yes, I surrender it all.
Everybody loves their mother, but my mother introduced me to Jesus. My mother began teaching Sunday school at the age of 16 years old. She had me when she was 18. And every day I knew church. That's all I knew. Church. Being in church, going to church, praying. I, that's what she taught me. But you know what? The most important thing she taught me was Jesus' no sacrifice, thing. the way he died on the cross. Ah, wisdom, that's what this season no is all about. Ways of man. Oh, yes. Give him the praise on today. You were here before Because he didn't have to begin. do it. It was a choice he made. Above all kingdom, a choice to be obedient to the Father. Above all thrones. Ah. Above all treasures of the earth There's no way to measure what you're worth Crucified Lay behind the star Lives to die Rejected and
I can remember the old saints, they said, they used to say, if I couldn't say much, I would just wave my hand. And so on today, <laughs> we need to wave a hand because we need to be able to show just how grateful we are how thankful we are for him giving his life <laughs> so I'm going to tell you if you can't stand, wave a hand if you can't speak, wave a hand all my words for sure oh yes I got nothing he'll accept whatever we offer to him how could give him our I best express. that's what we do on my yes. He's a God that has everything, but you know what he doesn't I could have? Sing he doesn't have songs. our praise. So that's the gift we can As give to I him often today. Do. That we can shout hallelujah and say amen. But every song no, must we can stand. say thank you. So I throw up my hands and praise you again and again Cause all that I have is a hallelujah, hallelujah And I know it's I know not it's much, not but I have nothing else fit for a king Except for a heart singing hallelujah Hallelujah. I've got one response. I've got just one move. With my arms stretched wide, I will worship you. So I throw up my hands and praise you. Throw up my hands, 
praise you again and again Cause all that I have is a hallelujah Hallelujah And I know it's not much But I've nothing else fit for a king Except for a heart singing hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen, amen. What a mighty God we serve. I just praise him on today for being who he is and for, for loving little old me because I know every day, every hour that I fall short, that I am in no way who I need to be in him. And so I just thank God for just forgiving me for all of my sins. And then he picks me up and dusts me off and cleans me so that I can start all over again. I just praise God for that. It is time to give. For those of you that are in this place, you know what to do. It's a tray right up front for you to make use of. For those of you that are out yonder way, that's a southern word, out yonder way, <laughs> feel free to give. Um, whether you want to drop it off here at the church, mail it in, or use our electronic giving format, tithe.ly.com. And certainly, certainly we lift up the Lord for your gifts, for your love, for your care, and your concern for us. And so we offer on today a word of prayer because we know so many that stand in the need of prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we, we start this prayer by thanking you for every offering that was given. Heavenly Father, we thank you no matter how big or small because a sacrifice is a sacrifice. And when we think of the woman who gave just a pence or two, <laughs> she gave more than the wealthiest people in the place because she gave from her lack. And so right now, today, we thank you for every sacrificial gift that has been given in your name. And Heavenly Father, we pray that you would multiply it, dress it, bless it, and grow it in their lives. And that they would see many a benefit from this gift that has been given. And then, Heavenly Father, we know that there are some who just stand in the need of prayer. And they're going through some things. They're facing some serious life challenges, Lord. And so we call on you right now. I may not know everything that's going on in a person's life, but Father, I feel it. Yes, there are some out here wrestling with substance abuse on today. Heavenly Father, they trying. They're trying to do the right thing, but it keeps calling them. And so right now, Lord, I pray that you would give them even one night of relief. Mm. Cause them, Heavenly Father, to be able to meditate and think on you during their times of sobriety. And Heavenly Father, I pray that you would touch their family members. And Father, it is hard to have a family member out here and know you can't do anything to help them. Oh, Lord, we pray right now that you would give us a sense of peace. A peace of knowing that you are with them come what may. And that you can go places that we cannot go. And that you can be in the midst of situations that we cannot be in the midst of. And so right now, we dispatch your angels, Lord. Ah, but as we pray these prayers, we, we have to say, Lord, thy will be done. Because we know that some things may not go exactly how we pray for them to go because you are yet in control and still sit on the throne. And so, Father, because of that, we just say thank you in advance for whatever you're going to do in those situations and many more. I, I can't stay here, Lord, as much as I want to, as much as I feel I need to stay, but let me just throw it out. Heavenly Father, be with the bereaved on today. 
There are so many of us that have suffered a loss. Ah, losses of various kinds, whether it's a loss of a loved one, whether it's loss of a job, and whether it's loss of your church and church family is so many closing on today. And so, Heavenly Father, we pray. And we pray for the sick, the shut-in, Lord, those that are battling with cancer. We call on you and that you would be the healer. And then, Heavenly Father, we just say thank you. Thank you for being who you are, always and amen. In the name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Amen, amen. I, t I promise you, I could have continued praying and praying. And I know that during this Lenten season, I'm not alone in that because we've been spending some extra time praying. Uh, during the time that we would be doing that thing that we gave up and sacrificed during Lent, if we chose to do so, during those times, we pray. So if you gave up uh, a certain food, and when you would be eating that food, instead you're going to pray. I didn't give up any food this year. Lord knows I needed to. Uh, but I thank God that the Holy Spirit led me in making choices and decisions about what to step away from or to do during this Lenten season. And my prayer is that it would be acceptable to our Lord and Savior. It is now time for our sermonic message. Today's sermonic message comes from Genesis, the ninth chapter, the 12th through the 16th verses, the 12th through the 16th verses, and it reads, God said, this is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. And when the bow is in the clouds, I will see it. And remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. <laughs> amen and amen. The subject of this evening or afternoon's sermonic message is the rainbow's beauty. The rainbow's beauty. A quick word of prayer. Ha! Huh! Holy Spirit. You know I need you, right? And you know that I need you to give me the words to speak on today. And that you would fill me with your Holy Spirit that I might be able to, to speak on your behalf. And give a message that would be life-changing to those who hear it. And Father, I'm not talking about everything being changed at one time. If one little thing can be changed on today, I say thank you. And so my prayer is, Heavenly Father, is that this scripture text, this word, would be a blessing to these people in the same way that it has already been a blessing unto me. Amen. So the beauty of a rainbow. One of the still today most beautiful natural sights that we can see is the rainbow. And, and to me, it seems like we become just like little kids when we see a rainbow in the sky. And we tap each other. Did you see that rainbow? When we get to our destinations, we ask those folks, did you see the rainbow? I mean, just the beauty of the colors of the rainbow, how the hues go from one to the next to the next, and how it's always the same. What a miracle. How the colors don't change places or positions. They remain the same the entire time. Oh, what a miracle and a blessing from God. Uh, but what we need to know is that, yes, that rainbow reminds us of God, 
of his goodness, his grace, his mercy, his power. Uh, the fact that he could even create something as beautiful as the rainbow. But when I was studying this scripture and, and exegeting, as some of the theologians would say, one of the things that I found most amazing is that the rainbow was never intended to be a reminder for us. Mm, girl, you better stop. It was never intended to be a reminder for us. It was intended to be a reminder for God. Mm. I, I know that that's hard, but I'm going to come back because I know we think our God don't need a reminder. He knows everything. So, so as much as we appreciate the rainbow, and when we see it, what we really need to be saying is, thank you, Lord, for remembering. Whoo! Thank you, Lord, for remembering for remembering your love for us, for remembering your care for us, for remembering your promises to us. And so I am just grateful on today for the rainbow because it reminds God of the promises he's made to us. Now, just before the scripture text that we're covering today began, God made a promise. Uh, that he would not destroy the earth by water again. He was talking to Noah, and he had just come off of uh, the ark, and God had destroyed everything. We know, that, we know this narrative. God had destroyed everything except Noah and all the people that got on that ark with him. But after he did it, it's almost as if he was sorrowful. Like, you know, he loved us so much that he hated to destroy us. It's like any good parent. And we love our children so much, but yet and still we had to spank them sometimes. Now, because I know people going to be on the Internet behind saying something like that. Please understand that there is a difference between spanking and beating. And I'm never going to advocate the abuse and misuse of a child. Never, ever, ever, ever will I advocate for that. But there are times that spanking is appropriate uh, to train, to show. And so like any good parent, after we give the spanking, we become sad. Oh, y'all know we become sad. The child is crying, we hear him crying. Most of the time it's not even because the spanking hurt, because you know we didn't have to do nothing. They crying because their feelings are hurt. That you even said you was going to spank them. And as we see that child, compassion grows within us. And we say, I'm sorry. I didn't want to spank you. I had to. You didn't give me any other choice. And that's how God felt after the flood. I didn't want to do it. I love you, but you gave me no other choice. So he made a commitment that he would never do it again. Now, I can't say I made the commitment to never spank my daughter when she was of, a, of that age again. Uh, but certainly God said, I'm not going to do that thing to you again. And so he made a promise to Noah. And in addition to making that promise, he even went as far as saying, I am going to set a reminder so that I will never forget what it is that I said that I was going to do for you. Now, please understand that the, the rainbow was not our idea. And we never asked God for a sign, a signal, for anything other than his word. But it was God's idea because he wanted us to be assured that he is going to do what he said he's going to do. So that's the first thing I would tell us on today. Please be assured that God is going to do what he says he is going to do. He has made all of us some promises. 
And I just want to encourage us to hang on to those promises with a deaf grip. Don't allow anybody to remove those promises from you. Don't give up on them. Don't give in. I know we've been praying for some things. And last week we did that Don't Stop Praying song. So let me just go back there. Don't stop praying. Trust and know and believe that he is going to fulfill his promises. I'm always careful right there because people will challenge you. And they will say, yeah, you keep saying that he's going to bless me with this or that because I've been praying for it, but he didn't. Well, he may not because the blessing he has in store for you may be so much more than your mind can even contemplate. Who? Uh, Lord, you're talking to me. I know you're talking to me. I can't say he's speaking to anybody else. He talking to me. So keep on praying because what he has in store for us, be assured he's going to do it for no other reason than he promised. He entered into a covenant relationship with us, his people. And when I say a covenant relationship, I mean that he entered into an agreement with us. And the agreement was more on his end than it even was on ours. He said, I promise you I'm never going to do this again. Not water. That don't mean we won't get punished. Come on now. But it won't be by floods. And so I just thank God on today for coming up with the bright idea to leave us a sign. And the sign is, oh, so beautiful. Mm. We need to think about that. Now, the other thing we need to know, we're, we're already assured that the sign is for us. And, and it was his idea to give it to us. Uh, but also know that he is in control of the sign. Uh. And we can't will a rainbow to show up in the sky. It don't work that way. He, uh, the rainbow shows up when he deems for the rainbow to show up. Yes, I know the weather people have put together, you know, plans. And if this happened and the, the weather is this or that and the heat rises and this and that happens, a rainbow will appear. Quit working so hard trying to explain God because you can't. At the end of the day, it is his choice. And he's in control of the sign. So ladies and gentlemen, don't ever forget that. Yes, be assured that he is going to keep his promises towards us. Uh, but believe me, he is in control of it. Oh, mm, somebody needs to know that today. You can't order him around like a butler. Yes, keep praying. I said keep praying. But understand that it's his choice. And that's how come we pray, thy will be done. Because we know that he knows what's best for us. He already knows how crazy we would be if we won the mega million. He already know. He already know that we wouldn't even go back to church. Half the time we only in church because we ain't got nothing. And we in there crying and begging and pleading for him to help us out. Uh, but when times are good, the first thing we do is forget about God and walk away from him like we don't need him. But you know, what I love about the Lord is that he has a way. He will stand still and wait on you to come back to him. Uh, because life, <laughs> it goes through seasons. And just because the sun is shining today, it does not mean it's going to be shining on tomorrow. Mm. And so that he will wait for us to come right back to him. He'll take us back, forgive us, hug us, wrap us up, and even continue to answer our prayers. We, we serve a loving God. But we have to understand and accept that he is in control. He's in control. So mother, father, I know you've been praying for your children, for their deliverance. He is in control. And yes, 
those of you that have spouses, you've been praying for your spouses. He's in control. And whether it's somebody like me, this pastor in a church, been praying for the church, I have to understand and accept that he is in control and that he has made some promises that he is going to fulfill. And my thing is on today, and let's work during this Lenten season to open our eyes so that we can see how he is answering our prayers. So we need to start saying something like, show me how you're answering my prayers. Because it's not that he is not answering them, it's that we can't see him answering them. Because we done made it up in our mind of what our answer already looks like. And for someone like me, and I'm not going to stay here long, I promise. For someone like me, I'm single again. I'm single again. I can't believe it, y'all, that I'm single again. But I'm single again. And I do want to marry again. But, of course, I got it in my head what he's going to look like. You know, he's going to be this complexion or that. He's going to be this size or that. He's going to have this type of job or that. He's going to have a home or that. I, he, I already got it designed in my head. But what I need to understand is that God is in control. I, I'm, I'm willing to go as far as, come on now, y'all walk with me for just a couple of minutes. I live in the Allegheny Valley. The number of African-American people out here is few and far between. You got to throw a good, strong rock to hit one. So for me to get caught up in what race and nationality they're going to be, I'm just wrong for that. And in fact, my husband told me before he left this earth, and I'm not opposed to it, so I don't want you to think I am. My husband told me before he left this earth, the next one going to be white. And I said, is that right? First of all, I, I could not accept that he was going to ever leave me. But he knew. And he told me that. So what I would say is, is that come what may recognize that God is moving and answering our prayers. And we need to ask him to allow us to see it. Allow us to see it. Quit passing your blessing. Quit walking away from your blessing because it don't look exactly the way that we may have designed it to look. Because he has it all under control. I praise God for that. And he has it so much under control that he even sent himself a reminder so he won't forget. He wants to make sure that he always remains a blessing to every living creature on this earth. And that he always gives us what he said he was going to give us. So during this Lenten season, take some time and get to know him. And get to know his sacrifices for us. Get to know all of the promises he's made to us that we might have something to hold on to. And the promise, the promise, I love this in verse 11. Even though it was not exactly the verse we covered today, he said, I establish my covenant with you that never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. On today, our prayer is that we would turn and look to him for our everything, that we would be assured that he has not forgotten. Ah, be assured that he is still in control and be assured that he will never leave us or forsake us. He is standing right here, ladies and gentlemen. And I don't know who needs to hear that on today. I know I do. I know I do. So let me just give it to you again because I got to let you go. I got to let you go. Know that indeed he has made us some promises. Be assured in that. Never doubt it. 
know that he is still in control and that he will show his sign when he get ready. Oh, my, my, my. And know that he is forever right there waiting on us. Waiting on us. So let me leave you with this word of, of wisdom. The rainbow is so beautiful. So ladies and gentlemen, let's start looking to the sky. Look to the sky. Look to the sky. Your blessing is there. And look to the sky. Your promise is there. And look to the sky. He is there. Oh, amen, amen. So the next time you see a rainbow, you think about the fact that God set that rainbow as a reminder of the blessings that he promised us. Amen and amen. And there may be some who don't have any idea what I'm talking about. Whether it's because they just have never met Jesus or because they've never truly experienced Jesus or because they've walked away from Jesus. And so I just want to take a brief moment and offer Jesus. He is our Lord and Savior. He always has been in existence from the beginning of time. But he agreed with the Father to come down to this earth in the form of a man and to give his life for us. He had to suffer. He bled. He died for us. And we have so much to be thankful for. But he didn't stay dead. He rose three days later. That's what this season is all about, this Lenten season that some of you have heard so much about. And certainly we all know about Easter Sunday, which really is Resurrection Sunday. And we're all familiar with that. Because on that day, Jesus rose from the dead. And it's through his resurrection that we are saved. And so we ought to be grateful for that, offering him all love and adoration for what he did for us. If you believe it, ah, you just need to confess it. And from that point forward, you are saved. Ah, as long as you believe, you are saved. We Baptists over here, y'all. I know you all around the world, but we Baptists over here. And a, a Baptist believe once saved, always saved. I sure am glad about it. And because once you confess it, believe it, oh, you are saved and you will always be saved as long as you believe. And so I just praise God for you on today. If you want to know more about Jesus Christ, feel free to reach out to me. Google First Baptist Church of Tarentum, Pennsylvania. You will find me. And that I might be able to share more with you about Jesus Christ. I thank God for him. Amen. And amen. Come on, stand up. We're going home. And we're going home with a reminder that God yet sits on the throne, and he is in control. Amen and amen. Amen. God is on the throne. He reigns forevermore. Just think about it. Just <laughs> think about it. Just think about it. Yeah. Why should I worry? Why should I feel? Why should I run when Jesus is here? I'm safe yes, in his heart, safe. safe in his heart, and nothing can take me away from his love. Why should I worry? Why should I fear? Why should I run when Jesus, Jesus is here? here? I'm safe in his heart, and we're safe. safe in his heart, yes. and nothing can.
the twelve's feet. Just think about you demonstrate how to be a servant. We we thinking about it. Hallelujah, He reigns. Hallelujah, He saves. Hallelujah, always, never, never gonna let me down. Hallelujah, He reigns. Hallelujah, He saves. Hallelujah, always, He's never gonna let me down. Hallelujah, He reigns. the cross during this Lenten season, we see, and we see his love for us. Amen. Let us pray. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we leave this place on today and wherever we may be, allow your Holy Spirit to be with us, guiding us, protecting us, covering us, and keeping us. And Heavenly Father, if it would be your will uh, bring us safely back together again, Lord. Ha. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. I need you. Uh -huh. I need you to just know that I really do need you. Amen. Amen.
Let's do it one more time. Come on, open your mouth and say, I need you. I need you. Let me hear you. You need me. You need me. For we're all. We're all a part of God's body. Stand with me. Stand with me. Agree with me. Agree. Bye. Bye. 